Hi, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you one technique for modeling multiple generations of tenant improvements. Now, when I talk about multi generational, what I'm meaning is multiple generations of leases, where one lease is signed, the lease is executed and carried out, and then there's an end of a lease term, at which point a new lease, either with the existing tenant or a new tenant, is signed. That second lease would be the second generation tenant. And then that lease goes for a predefined amount of time at which it likewise expires. And a third lease, that would be our third generation tenant, is signed. And at the signing of each new lease, in the case of office and retail and industrial property types, there's often a tenant improvement allowance that's paid out either directly to the tenant or as an allowance for the tenant to improve its space. And I'm gonna show you one way to dynamically model that. So let's get started. Uh, I have already built a template a file as well as a completed file. The template file includes uh, formatting, but no assumptions and no formulas, whereas the completed file is a completed file. And so my recommendation would be to download both uh, perhaps use the template and follow along as I move through here. And then uh, take a look at the completed file and compare uh, your formulas and uh, your result to the completed file. So let's get started. First, uh, I'm going to assume a three-suite office building, something really simple. Suite 100, Suite 101, Suite 102. Suite 100 is 5,000 square feet, 101 is 2,500, and 102 is 1,500. I assume that uh, Suite 100 and 101 at our analysis start uh, is already occupied and no additional tenant improvement is owed on the first generation lease. And so I will put the start month for that lease at zero because it started prior to the analysis start. But for suite 102, I'm assuming it's vacant, and that in month six of our analysis, a new tenant will occupy that space, a new lease is signed, and a tenant improvement allowance will be owed. In terms of an end month for the lease, suite 100 we'll call month 27, suite 101 we'll say month 19, and then suite 102, I'm going to assume a 48 month lease or a four year lease. And so I'll take my start month, I'll add 48, and then I'll subtract one because the start month is a full month and the end month is a full month. And so it's necessary to subtract one from our formula in order to have 48 months between uh, the start and the end. Finally, some TI per square foot assumption. So for suite 100, We'll assume, even though no TIs are owed in our first generation, we'll still just put 25 for 100, suite 100, 22 for suite 101, and then $20 for suite 102. Now to our second generation tenant. So what will happen is in month 27, the first generation lease will expire, and either that tenant will renew and likely negotiate some tenant improvement allowance, or that tenant will vacate and there will be a downtime period after which a new tenant will uh, take occupancy and likewise a tenant improvement allowance will be owed. And so this month, the start month, is where we're assuming any TIs will be paid out uh, or where TIs will hit our cash flows. And so I'm just going to assume six months of downtime. I'll take the end month for each tenant and I'll add six such that this is the start of the new, each new lease for each space. And then in terms of end month, here for my second generation tenants, I'll assume a 48 month lease. So I'll take start month, add 48 minus one, copy that down. And then finally, our third generation tenant, a similar thing. Oh, uh, I forgot tenant improvement. So in terms of uh, TI per square foot assumption for our second generation tenant, uh, I'm not gonna get too fancy here, so I'm just going to use what was uh, included in the first generation tenant. Um, so no uh, growth in that assumption. Again, keeping this simple. 
And then finally, third generation, I'll take the end month from the second generation, add six months to it, and then assume a 48 month lease for the third generation tenant. And then again, assume the same TI assumption for the third generation tenant as we assumed for the second and first generation tenants. And with our assumptions in place, now it's a matter of building out a formula that will drop into the correct period, the correct amount of TI owed in that period. But before I write this formula out, let me first talk about Boolean logic in Excel. Now Boolean logic it's important to all computer technology, not just spreadsheet programs such as Excel. And it rests on the concept that all the values can be reduced to either true or false. And we see that a lot in the, in the logical uh, expressions that we build in Excel, where we're asking yes and no questions, true or false questions. And the output is, if it's true, uh, Excel returns a one. And if it's false, Excel returns a zero, or one for true, zero for false. And you can see that in just a simple example here. I'm gonna ask in cell O10, does N9 equal 20? And of course it does. And so Excel spits out a true value. Likewise, we can ask in P10, does N9 equal 10? Well, in this case, no, it equals 20. Therefore, Excel spits out a false. Now, what many people don't realize is true is synonymous with one and false is synonymous with zero, such that we can multiply uh, any of these uh, Boolean values by some other value, such that if, the va if it's true, that value is what is uh, output, and if it's false, the result is zero. So I use an example. We'll take O11, that true statement, and we'll multiply it by 10,000. And because that is true, the result is 10,000, right? 10,000 times one. If we multiply the same by the false, the result is zero. 10,000 times zero equals zero. And so rather than building complex if statements here, that make it difficult to understand what's happening, I'm going to use some Boolean logic to basically ask, is this month equal to either this month, this month, or this month? And if it is, what, will, uh, what the result of that cell will be is the TIs owed for the respective generation tenant. So let me show you how this would look. Uh, I'm gonna start with an equals, open parentheses, and this is the Boolean logic. And I'll say, does this month, now I'm going to hit F4 two times, and that will lock in the row, such that I can copy right, and the month will move, but when I copy down, the row will stay in place. Okay, so P dollar sign six, does that equal the start month of our first generation tenant. And I'll hit F4, one, two, three times to lock in the column. Again, that way it doesn't move left and right, it can only move up and down when we copy. And so the result is, and let's just stop there, we're asking does this equal month one? And of course it, it uh, results in a false. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply that logic by the tenant improvement that would be owed if that logic were true. And the, that is our TI per square foot, locking in the column, times the, the size of the space, in this case, 5,000 square feet, locking in the column, okay? And that is our first function. Then we're going to add so let's, let's imagine, so if that's false, it's gonna end up as zero. Uh, if it's true, it will end up 25 times 5,000. Next, we're gonna ask, so open parentheses, does this month equal 
the second generation tenant start month, locking in the column. If so, it will multiply by the TI per square foot times the size of the space. And then finally, we'll do the same for the third generation tenant. Does this month, locking in the row, equal the start month of the third generation tenant, locking in the column? If so, TI per square foot times the size of the space, locking in the column, and the result is zero. Why is it zero? Because month one does not equal the start month of the first generation, second generation, or third generation start month. However, if we take this and we copy it to the right, copy it all the way over, as we move to the right, we should expect uh, TIs to be paid out in month 33 and in month 86. So we move to 33, there's our first TI, 120, 125,000. And we can test that by just coming back and we expect that to be $25 a foot times 5,000 square feet, 125, okay, that's correct. And then we'd expect 125, I think it was month 86, month 86. So now that that's worked, if we've locked in our cells appropriately when we built the formula in the first place, we can just copy those down. And then we should expect uh, 20 times 1,500 in month six. There it is. The same in 59 and 112 for, the, for uh, our suite 102. And then month 25 and 78 for suite 101. And we can just move it to the right and we'll see that happening. And there are all of our tenant improvements. And so I would just finish this up then with a total line, right? Because if we're modeling to a DCF, we just wanna understand how much are we going to be paying out in tenant improvements in each month. And we can come back and we can view how much is related to each tenant, but ultimately this is the sum of all of our tenants in this building. So that's how, uh, or that's one method for modeling multiple generations of tenant improvements. Now think about, about it, this same logic that we used, and notice how simple that formula is, I love it. This same logic can be used to, um, for instance, model leasing commissions in these uh, months. The same logic could be used to ask, is this month uh, or, or is this space occupied in each of these months? And if so, it could output a true. Uh, and that true could be multiplied by, say, a rent value, or it could be multiplied um, by a square footage value if you're calculating occupancy, et cetera. Uh, this uh, technique is, is a powerful way to model uh, multiple generations of tenants and, and the various components that make up their cash flows. Uh, if you have questions, Please don't hesitate to reach out and thanks for your time.